Now let's take it to where the pain is here in our nation. Let's go to Jerika Duncan. She's joining us live now from the scene. Jerika, I said yesterday during our live coverage that each of the people affected are somebody, somebody. Today, what are we learning about the victims? Yeah, there are a number of students that have come out to this area behind me near that flagpole to set up flowers, to mourn, to grieve. Uh, it's been a very touching experience just to watch people coming together. We spoke earlier to a chaplain who told me he had direct contact with the mother of Mason Shermerhorn, mm. and he said that he actually told the mom yesterday that he would go inside the school to try and find her son. He was obviously, at that point, he said the body had already been taken out, and of course they later learned that he was among the four who had died. But one of the things that he said is that everyone, quote, acted together as one, one goal to save everyone and get them out safely. And I think that just speaks to the, the sort of coming together, if you will, of a community that is grieving, um, that is at a loss for words. Mm -hmm. Again, we've talked about being in these situations and seeing this play out in other cities, but it's different when it happens in your hometown. And that's sort of the sentiment we're hearing from people who've come out today. There was a mother and her nine-year-old son. She said, obviously my son is nine. He didn't go to this high school, but I just felt like I needed a place to put my pain. Uh, so she was out here, she said, sort of paying her respects. Uh, we spoke to a Jose Ortiz, a ninth grader, who said he knew Christian Angula and called him a friend, said that he was someone who always motivated him to be better. Uh, Esther Matias, ninth grade, that also came out to lay flowers talked about uh, Christian as well as a good kid um, and said that she's praying for the community, even talking about finding it in her heart to uh, pray for the shooter, the alleged shooter in all of this. And going back to what Anna said in reference to what we know about uh, this shooter, you know, in that incident report, when the FBI, when the sheriff's office showed up and questioned him, he said, uh, that he expressed concern that anyone was, quote, accusing him of threatening to shoot up a school, stating that he would never say such a thing, even in a joking manner. So based on that, you have someone that clearly knows this is not something you joke or play around with, mm. uh, but we now know the end result. And I think so many people are always desperate to understand what that person was thinking, but I don't think it's something that many of us will ever understand because... Uh, it is it is truly unexplainable. It, it doesn't make sense for the families, for the children. Uh, something else that I thought was interesting is late last night when we spoke to one of the students, she said she's worried about the younger kids. She's mm. 16 years old. Right. And she talked about worrying about the future of the people that are coming up after her. And I think that is uh, a, a sentiment we've heard over and over again. I think it'll be this generation that really changes things because they've now been touched by this over and over and over again. Yeah, important conversations. Had them with my twins last night. Very same thing. Un unfathomable yeah. things, Jerika. Things we will never understand, as you so eloquently say. But what we do understand is the fact that communities come together. And right now you're giving us a yeah. sense of how they are placing their pain right there behind you and they're helping people to find a little purpose in that pain. Jerika Duncan, weekend anchor for CBS News, national correspondent, nobody better. My friend, it's good to see you on the stream. Sad it's under these circumstances. Thank you so much.